Hey guys, this is BenRob0329, and today I'm doing a slightly different video series than what you're probably used to. Rather than a gameplay series, this is a game make series. And the game we're going to be making is a game based on SCP-3008. Now you might be asking, Ben, what is SCP-3008? SCP-3008, aka the Infinite Ikea, is an SCP article written by this person here. And the essential gist of it is that it's an Ikea, but one that when you enter in through its main entrance doors, transports you to an alternate dimension that is like the inside of an Ikea, but it never ends. Thankfully though, there's enough people surviving that you can in fact find some form of civilization and join a tribe or clan or what have you. And they're in the main article, they're friendly. In some other interpretations of the universe, they're at war. It really depends on what you want to go for. Now, you might be wondering, well, what could be so dangerous if they're at peace? Well, the staff are not human. They're these things, as interpreted by the Unity game, that I had the idea before the Unity game became a thing, but then the Unity game became a thing, so I didn't make it for a while. But then I thought the Unity game had stopped development, so I started and made a little tech demo. And then it started back up again, and it's becoming increasingly popular, so no matter what I do, somebody's probably going to think I'm ripping it off. But such is life. On the bright side, I get to try to do something different than the Unity game, and... I don't know, make it more... Minecrafty, I guess, because this is going to be for Minetest. So, yeah. So if you want to learn more about it, you can go ahead and read about it here. I'll probably put this link in the description as well, so you can look there. So the main bullet points that we're going to have to have are, number one, it's an Ikea. It needs to have Ikea things, and it needs to look and feel like an Ikea. I was originally going to have it generate multiple stories, which I still could do, but it's a lot simpler to do it as it's actually written in the article, which is that there's one floor and the ceiling never never shows its face, except probably in like the food court, because those have lower ceilings. So I'd imagine that those would have like low hanging lights and things like the actual food food courts in an IKEA. But it needs to look and feel like an IKEA. Needs to have those polished concrete floors with the arrows that probably don't actually lead anywhere. The you are here signs that probably just show you in the middle of nothing. Random sail signs and um, navigational signs and all those kinds of things just kind of strewn about. It also needs to have, as according to the article, some more weird sections like a pharmacy. Normal Ikeas don't have pharmacies, but this one apparently has one. So could throw in really any kind of store into here because it doesn't have bounds on reality. But I think it should feel like Ikea no matter what because that's the main point of the SCP. So that's going to be our first priority is getting it to feel and look like an Ikea. Second point is going to be is going to be the day-night cycle. And what I mean by that is that in the article, it describes it as having some sort of day-night cycle, but not necessarily one that has bounds on reality. The lights turn on during the day, they turn off during the night. Obviously, we're gonna have to add in a big <laughs> sound to scare the heck out of everyone when it happens, but at that point, all of these staff members will run around like crazy and will attack you because you're in the store after hours and they're obviously not exactly very sentient from the sounds of it. Nice, chillaxed music during the day that sounds like something you'd hear from an Ikea. Then the moment it turns night, you don't know when, the music stops instantly. And then all the lights shut off. from your position and you're left in darkness you know because we we gotta show off that we can do something cool other than just 
everything's gone and done and dark and what have you. Next point is the staff. And that's going to be an interesting one because they're going to be custom entities. I want them to spawn out of sight of the player at all times. And I want to make their animations not look janky. As best as I can, not being an animator. The next point is spawning. And this is a point because I want it to have some significance. I want a new player, even if the server is online 24 seven and in game time, it's been, you know, years and years. Out of game time, this player is just joining. I wanted to try to mimic the article, which is where you don't see any staff or really any dangers. It's just weird for the first few days. And then you start to see some staff and then you really start to see some staff. And then you best already have shelter or you are screwed. And the reason for that is because the way I want to go about spawning and player parties is I want to make it so that when they first spawn in, they're actually on a separate layer from the rest of the Ikea. And the idea is that there's an outer Ikea building that you walk into when you first spawn in. You walk through the doors, they will hopefully have an animation if I don't feel really lazy. And then you are teleported in, you and your party. Probably the way I'll go about it is I'll let players hang out in a lobby parking lot type area while everyone spawns in initially, and then they can all walk through the doors together. And the doors will have a copy of the area they'll spawn into in there so that it looks like they're walking in before they're teleported to the actual area. They'll all be teleported at once, once everyone is actually in the doors, and then the game will start. This means that if you don't go in with anybody, you have a slightly slimmer chance of finding civilization unless there's a lot of people on the server. Which who knows, since this is going to be based on a fairly stable game already, might be ready for servers soon. Depends on how quickly I can get through this stuff. I also want the difficulty to ramp up throughout the nights. So on the first night, you can sleep on just any given bed without too many issues. But after night, say, three, to try to mimic the article as closely as possible, you will start to see staff. You won't necessarily know. They might not cause you any problems. Maybe they won't spawn around you at this point. Maybe they'll only spawn on new terrain. So as you explore, you'll find some, but not yet appearing around you and then by night five or six there's staff they're attacking night seven you better have some shelter and then the last point is crafting this needs to be a survival game there needs to be crafting in it i'm not completely sure what probably breaking down furniture or furniture kits and being able to build them because Ikea is not just a bunch of pre-made stuff, it's kits. So what I'm thinking is that you can build the kits and you get, you know, blueprints for things and you can slowly level up and try to craft things without blueprints. And I think that that might make it more interesting, especially if they don't have kits for something, but you find blueprints for something. So you have to gather the materials and parts from other kits. I think that might actually be a really interesting idea. So it's been about a week, and the reason for that is because I felt I wanted to make some progress before uh, kind of giving you guys more of an update on some of these specifics for implementation. And the reason it's taken me so long is because I ran into a few issues because I don't really do map gen things very often. In fact, I don't really ever do map gen things. So this is kind of the first experience I have with trying to do something with MG flat and decorations and biomes and things. But with the help of Jordak and Paramat, I have managed to put together basics and I'm, I've worked through it and I think I understand what to do for the most part. The basic design of the game is going to be a mostly decentralized one. There isn't going to be a single default mod and there isn't going to be a core or what have you. It's all going to be kind of individual components that mesh together in their own ways. For example, the mod that provides all the warehouse nodes and biome definitions will depend on the base map gen utility 
mod, which basically sets up some aliases and makes sure that we're in MG flat. So for those of you who don't know, all of this code is going to be up on my GitLab as I work on it. I push commits regularly whenever I get stuff done. I don't really wait a while and then push. I kind of just push right now because trying to get to that alpha milestone you see on screen there. But this is my breakdown so far of the warehouse pile, which is the sort of where you have all the racks of kits and things with the, the main floor of most Ikea. So this is not the showroom where you get the little tiny house examples and the furniture and bits of household items and what have you with the polished concrete floors with the arrows on them leading you through this weaving maze so you buy as much stuff as possible. You know, this is where you go and get the large furniture kits and see the random sales on larger bait pieces of furniture. And I felt that this was probably a good place to start because this is most likely going to make up a large portion of IKEA. But the basic idea for breaking this down is we have racks, floor variation, the signage, the small little cell displays in the aisles that have like clearance stuff, and of course the lighting. Now so far I have the racks modeled, textured, and spawning so that they don't overlap. They don't spawn in neat rows quite yet, and I haven't quite figured out how to get them to painlessly. And of course they don't have contents yet because I don't have any contents to put on them because that's going to have to be defined by more furniture-y stuff, and that's probably going to be more general categories of mods, like there's going to be a kitchen furniture mod, for example, that defines, you know, kitchen tables and, I don't know, for in stovetops and stuff. I don't remember what all IKEA sells as far as appliances. I think they sell some, but not a ton. And you can see the, the reference images uh, here, and if you notice, the first shelf on the bottom there is red, uh, which I made note to be sure to add that into my model because I think that that's a bit of an important detail. Next up for floor variation, this is just going to be me doing more texture stuff to make uh, global textures, which is basically whether each block on a map block has different a different connecting texture. We also have signage, which is going to be a lot of work because there's a lot of variation in it. That's like signs at the end of rows and sale signs and random advertisements and the like. The random advertisements I might save for like absolute last and just kind of have those placed up throughout. But of course there is more biome specific stuff because you're not going to have the giant $1 hot dog sign in the showroom because it won't fit. And then the little sale displays that you have strewn throughout. Um, but yeah. This is, as of right now, the main thing that we're going to be trying to work on, or I'm going to be trying to work on. You guys don't have to, obviously, but it is up on GitLab if you want to, if you want to help out. I'm going to try to break down some of the other biomes, and or at least start to. Uh, do note, though, that GitLab does have um, threaded comments, so try to keep it broken down into the these main sections, and then reply to more specific stuff. But yeah, right now it's basically breaking it down into the basic warehouse stuff and then skybox definitions for, you know, making it a single color and map gen. As of right now, this is basically the state of it. These racks need to have collision uh, defined and they kind of spawn in big rows, but it's very chaotic. I'm okay with it being a little chaotic, because this is based on an SCP after all, but not quite this chaotic. So that is sort of my first priority, is to get these things spawning in actual rows. Um, and that's going to be what I work on here in a bit. Okay, it's currently the next day. Um, and I'm both recording on a camera and on a screen recording right now. So you guys can see what I'm working on, and also see my face, which I don't do very often. And I'm, I'm, I'm wearing my GitLab t-shirt. So I have fixed the... I've done a few things. For one thing, I've gotten the hand working. It's, it's always good to get the hand working. Um, and I've got some heart textures. They're just kind of temporary 
look kind of crappy. I threw them together in like five minutes. Whatever. Um, and yeah, I got this broken up so that it's uh, it's a global texture, which is always nice. And these now spawn in row like things to stretch on for a long time. Uh, and the way I did that is just it's a long schematic that spawns in. And it has two rows and there's space in between them and stuff. Um, so these will spawn kind of one next to the other. Unfortunately, we do have these weird shadow bugs. I don't know how to fix those. If someone knows, let me know in the issue tracker, because all this is, in fact, still up on the GitLab. Um, this video is not sponsored by them, but they did send me a free t-shirt at one point because of everybody that migrated, and I was one of the people who had migrated before Microsoft bought GitHub, so. It's always fun to get free t-shirts. Thanks, GitLab. But if you'll notice, we don't exactly have any lights, despite this supposedly being an IKEA warehouse. That's what we're going to work on next, is the lights. Um, so I have to model those, but the general idea is that it's going to be one of those industrial type fluorescent lights that just has um, a couple leads on it that the other part of the vertices just go, you know, like friggin' many, many thousands of meters up into the air. Just so that you will never, ever, ever find the top of it in game, hopefully. Uh, and I'll have to, of course, experiment with how well that works, but can always tweak it and adjust it and just move it up and down, and it won't add a ton of data because it's just the, the eight vertices from the leads. I'll just show you when I get to there. Model time lapse in three, two, one. the light box um, I was originally gonna do just two uh, like sort of pole or um, sort of metal rope I don't remember what it's called um, just attached to it going up probably just black because it's just gonna fade into the fog um, but because this is 16 pixel, I can't center that. And I don't really want to break from the whole being accurate to a 16 pixel model. So I did four. But yeah, now I just have to UV unpack this thing. find out we were just spawning in a giant blank area for some reason um, these all spawn in these don't seem to spawn at least not as far as I can tell but they're gonna hang about right there I'm beginning to see a problem with the skybox color being the same so perhaps I should make the skybox very dark dark gray doesn't seem to be lighting much well that could be a problem 
like does not spread far enough at 16 nodes in the air. So we might have to hang these quite a bit lower. But yeah, I'm quite happy with how that has turned out. Like that it really does look like they just kind of stretch into infinity. So yeah, let's try to get these things spawning and then we can tweak everything. Probably going to reduce these quite a bit, but I don't mind the kind of... <laughs> that is terrifying. Oh, if I saw that, I... Whew. Oh yeah, that that would... Oh my. That That is... Ooh. Heh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's... <laughs> oh, that's making me feel like impending doom is coming. Oh, boy. Oh. Well, that would probably help. Rather than just uh, having that be misspelled and it not actually making any difference. Yeah, okay, now we're getting a lot less. Good, 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 good. I don't mind having a bit more of the chaotic type feel to this. Uh, I think that that's perfectly fine. But I do think we definitely need to change the skybox color to something a bit darker. Let's pop open GIMP. They can probably base it off this color. Ooh, or we just Turn it to one of these, like, dark blue-grays. Yeah, that would work. Maybe like this one? Let's try that. Well, that's definitely a much different feel. It shows up better. But I'm not so sure that the color works for a skybox. Yeah, maybe we go for something more like the, the dark yellow. And see how that goes. It's not, uh, not the most friendly yellow. It works. I will say it definitely works. Hmm. So I wonder what would happen if I just set this to be like this color, but slightly brighter. Like maybe instead of 81, we sent to like 77 uh, black. I don't know what the K actually stands for. It just means black. But yeah, maybe that might do the trick. Because I still want this to have a very ominous feel. But I also want you to be able to see those. Although considering the, uh, the bad anti-aliasing lines, I don't know that that's going to be very difficult. In reality though, Ikeas tend to have sort of beige walls uh, when you're not looking at racks. So... Hmm. But then again, everything in here is kind of stylized and amplified. Like, the racks are a blue-gray, but in here they're a very blue-gray, because that's the palette color that we have. Uh, which I think is fine. Kind of accentuates sort of Ikea, but amplified, which I don't mind. I just want it to have the right feel. The thing is, is that the skybox wouldn't really be that bright because there wouldn't be a ton of light hitting it, you wouldn't think. But that being said, it's not mentioned as being real dark in the actual SCP description. So perhaps not. Maybe there are other sources of light. Yeah, that's not bad. It's a little less odd uh, 
uh, I would say, than the uh, the old color. All right. Um, I would have liked to have gotten the day-night cycle working properly in this, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. So I'm going to leave this dev vlog out here because um, I am out of time and I have to edit this tomorrow. So thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please hit that like button and comment down below for what you'd like to see in a future video. Also, please check out the issue, issue tracker and comment on things and start discussing. Just basically stir up a bunch of discussion over on the GitLab issue tracker. Thanks for watching. Thank you.